It is cold and it is wet, which is perfect for finding mushrooms. In last week's video, we used the Rebel uh, T1i with the inverted lens. Uh, that's a great way to get macro, but today, because it's so wet, I'm gonna be using a different setup. This is a 5D Mark IV, which is a little bit more weather sealed than the Rebel is. And instead of inverting the lens, I brought extension tubes. For under 100 bucks, you can set up your camera with any lens you have and by extending uh, the distance between the lens and the sensor, it's gonna give you macro results. So you can get, this is probably the easiest way to get started into macro because your autofocus is going to work and it's gonna be less complicated, a lot less complicated <laughs> than inverted the lens. I know that was only 10 bucks. This is about 60, 40 to $60, but it's gonna get you some great results. So now we just gotta go out find some mushrooms, take a couple of shots, and then go inside and show you how to edit these photos. Uh, in last week's video, I showed you some that had the glow underneath from the mushroom, and I think that's what I'm gonna be looking for today, is trying to find a mushroom that shows light through. And then I'm gonna show you how to take these photos, process them, and come out with something like this. I've been practicing, I've been trying to learn the technique and master the technique. It takes time and patience. So if you don't get it right in the first time, I didn't either. <laughs> but it's really cool to play around with things like this uh, that you have in your backyard or that you could buy at the store, but still get some incredible looking results. So let's go find some mushrooms and then we'll go in and process the photos. Ooh, it's cold. For this particular type of photo, it's not any mushroom, wait, I'm like in a hole here. For this particular photo, not any mushroom is going to work. It has to be one that lets light shine through, which is why it's a little bit more difficult finding something wild out here. But it just so happens that I found this one here is set perfectly on this stump with a little bit of green moss and something that's gonna make it look really cool. But first, let me get this stick and clean up some of the debris from the background because I want it to be as clean as possible so that I don't have to do all this work in post. And I brought a loom cube that I can shine down and get that glow. You need a bright flashlight, a loom cube, something that's gonna give you that light in the background. All right, so the idea is to do a focus stack image of the mushroom so I can get really good depth. I'm gonna focus in the front, in the middle, and at the base, and then the rest could, could be a little bit blurry. So I'm gonna take three shots of it like this, and then we'll illuminate the mushroom from the top and do the same thing. So let's start taking photos. Turn the camera on, turn live view on. This way I can zoom in. All right, now that we got enough images to stack this mushroom, I'm gonna do the same, but with the loom cube. So you can see on the screen here, how much it changes the light and how much light you see underneath. So I believe right there is a good shot. And if you wanna add something totally different to the photo, we can throw in some, some Christmas lights just to add some magic. I don't know if that's gonna show up. On, come on lights. There we go. Something like that in the background is gonna give us that, that glow and that out of focus blur, which is gonna look really cool, I think. <laughs> Okay, literally right here, I found another mushroom that should work. I'm just gonna clear up some of the sticks and then I can bring that other camera and shoot up so you can see underneath and you can see it glow. It's transparent, it's seen better days, but I think it's going to be a perfect candidate for this glowy thing. Kinda smells funny here, I hope I'm not stepping in anything. But anyway, let me get the camera, set it up here looking up and see what kind of photo we can get. There's a lot of mushrooms here, wow. It's crazy when you start to look at all this stuff and how, how many things there are to photograph. 
especially doing macro. <sighs> Okay, so here's the camera upside down on the tripod because, you know, it works. Looking up so I can see underneath the mushroom and go do that shine. So let me try to focus. Now, because the camera's upside down, I'm gonna do both shots at the same time. So the one that's illuminated, then I'll change focus and try to do it that way. You can see how that mushroom glows. Uh, I'll do it from here. I will adjust the focus and do a couple like that. Now, let me show you the extension tubes at full glory. You see this little mushroom here next to the other one? See how small it is? These are pine needles. Let me try to clean some of these up so I can show you how close you can get using extension tubes. These things are tiny and with all three extension tubes, I can get that close. I'm like two inches away. 45 to 60 bucks for the all three extension tubes and uh, the results are really, really cool. All right, let's go back in and I'll show you how to edit these photos and then some other ones that I did already uh, practicing and see what we can get. <laughs> all right, so once you get all your photos, then we can come over to Lightroom and we're gonna need Lightroom and Photoshop or another program that can do layers because we need to stack these images. Lightroom and Photoshop work together. It's a super easy workflow. I always do everything in Lightroom first because it helps me keep, every keep everything organized. The first thing we're gonna do is just do some basic tweaks on the photo to make it look as best as it, it can be in Lightroom. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, just some basic tweaks like con contrast, reduce the highlights, just try to make it look uh, good and then once we blend it, then we can adjust and do whatever tones and anything else we want to do. When you edit one photo, go ahead and select the other three and click on synchronize it and make sure all of it is selected. This is gonna make all the images look the same. Then we're gonna do right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. This might take a minute. It's gonna start processing. It's gonna bring us to Photoshop. Depending on how big your files are and the speed of your computer, it might, might take just a few seconds or a few minutes. But there we are, here's three images. Let's select the photos. Uh, let me exit that. Let's select the three layers. Go to Edit, Auto Align Layers. Hit Auto. This is gonna, every time you move the focus or you shift the focus, there's a little bit of focus breathing. Different lenses have more than others. And this is gonna make sure that there's no movement and that every layer is perfectly aligned. That's it, that was done. Then we go to edit, auto blend layers. Stack images and let's do seamless tones and colors. That way there's no jagged pixels or anything else that gets in the way. And there we go. Now we have a lot more depth of field in this mushroom, the base, the top, I probably could have done a few more images, but three was enough for this example. Now that the image stacked has got the focus, I'm gonna go to layer. Uh, let's just do merge layers, and it's gonna merge all the layers into one. Let's go back over to Lightroom and select the bright images. This is the ones that I did the loom cube on top. And we're gonna do the same process. Edit, open as layers in Photoshop. Give this a minute, just like we did before. Auto align layers. Auto, okay. Then we're gonna move to edit, auto blend layers one more time and stack images, okay. Seamless tones and colors, yes. There we go, it's done, it looks good. Don't worry about the top, I'm not gonna be using the top of this photo, so we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, layer, merge layers, done. Select, Command C, layer, Command V, so now, now we have both images and you can see that they're not perfectly aligned. So I'm gonna do the same process. Edit, auto align layers. This is gonna move them so that everything lines up and then I can blend the images together. Just like that. Did a great job aligning the layers. Now I can add a mask. I'm gonna put the bright mushroom on top, add a mask and Command I inverts the mask. 
Then I take a paintbrush. Now I make sure it's, uh, where's my paintbrush effects here? Then I make sure that it's a soft brush. Here's the hardness, it's at 0%, and I'm gonna paint white, which is going to expose the top layer. Color in this Photoshop is F6, so now I'm gonna switch it over to white. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, uh, that's option, and I scroll my finger down on the mouse. And then everywhere I paint, it's going to reveal that layer that was hidden. And you can see that even if I go over it's not, it, it just gives me some of that glow from the other photo. And because it's a layer and you're just hiding or showing, you could always just go in and touch up whatever you don't like or whatever looks a little bit too glowy or just out of place. So this just takes a little bit of time and practice. You can see once you start painting, you start revealing the mushroom, you can go here and do a little bit of the stem uh, just so it glows. And then now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to make the brush quite a bit larger. And now I'm going to paint some of the outer edges like that because if it's glowing from the top, I want to see some light underneath. And don't worry if you get too carried away. If you get a little bit too much, we could always erase it by going to the black color and now hiding on that layer, hiding that, that glow on the layer. I want to leave it a little bit of wiggle room here in the bottom. And just like that, that's pretty much it. If you save this, this mushroom, it's gonna go right back to Lightroom. But remember I did some photos with Christmas lights? Let's go back here to Lightroom. Let's choose any of these work. I'm gonna select this one, and I'm just gonna edit in uh, Photoshop. Once the image is in Photoshop, you can select Command-A for select all, Command-C. Go back to the one that has the three layers, Command-V. Now we have another layer to work with, which I'm also going to auto align because we need all three to be aligned. So it's gonna, again, you, you align them, you, you can do it manually, but it is so much easier when you let the computer do it. Now you can do a mask on the lights and this time I'm gonna do it differently. I'm gonna hide the lights. So I'm gonna go a smaller brush and I'm just gonna paint where the lights are and hide them. This will give me an idea of where those lights are. And then when I go to the layer, to the, uh, the mask, I can do Command I for inverse and now it only shows me the lights and none of the other stuff. So that is the finished product. You, you can see how it takes a little bit of cropping because from photo to photo it moved. But that's pretty much it. If you want to get a little bit more complicated, you want to add some uh, layers and some edits to each individual layer, you can do that. You don't have to. Here in Photoshop, you just go to the, the uh, adjustment layers. You could add a, a curves layer to the bottom layer to make it darker, to give it that, you know, that moody, darker scene. You can lift the blacks and make it a little bit more on the gray side. This is up to your personal choice and how you want to edit this photo. Let me do a quick crop. And simple, we're done with the glowy mushroom effect. This is a technique I'm just now learning. I know I need a lot more practice, I could get a lot better at it. But this is fun just to go out, find things that interest you, find things that are everywhere, well, in most places, and just play around with the camera. It's, I spent hours <laughs> taking a lot of these photos and making some of these photos and the edits, tweaking them. To me, this looks great. I'm sure for stock, well, I'm not sure, but I think they'll do fine. Uh, but for stock, I do need to bring back the blacks. I don't want to give it too much. I think more of a, a pungy, contrasty image would do better for stock. Something like that. So I think that's, that's finalized. I think that would do great. But remember, when you're doing photos of mushrooms, take photos of people. Use yourself as a model. Who cares what you look like when you're out there holding a mushroom taking photos? This doesn't matter. Include yourself in the photos, concepts, are these mushrooms edible? I don't know. To be honest, I don't know anything about mushrooms. The only ones I know is the ones I buy at the store. But including yourself, using the same technique in other areas of photography is really gonna help you get better and generate more sales. So as far as uh, keywords, if you can find the name of the mushroom, the technical name, that would help you a lot. And if you can't, just get as close as possible. That's all for this episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. I lost a, the remote.